Number for Nelson Creston. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Yesterday, single moms came here to stand up for their kids and all children in BC living in poverty. Moms like Diane Terrellon were here asking the Premier to put some meaning into her slogans for a change and end the child support clawback that takes $17 million out of the hands of BC's poorest kids. With the stroke of a pen, Madam Speaker, the Premier could make an incredible difference in the lives of BC's poorest kids. So my question is to the Premier. Rather than dismiss these families like you did yesterday, will you today and stop smirking, Premier. Will you today, <laughs> member, member, you will direct your remarks through the chair. Sorry, Honourable Chair. And I would ask you to withdraw. I withdraw. Madam Speaker, will the Premier today stop dismissing these families and will she commit to ending the child support clawback? Minister of Social Development and Social Innovation. Madam Speaker, we've, we've, we've talked about this issue in this House before, and, and like I said before, as a father, as a teacher who's worked with children for a very long time, I know this is an extremely challenging issue for single-parent families. Now, I know the, minister, uh, the member opposite uh, has heard this before, and I've had the honour to serve in this ministry for now 10 months. I've had the honour to meet with individuals, including some of those people who were here yesterday, and hear about the, the concerns they have. And they are challenging. And I'm pleased that they're there advocating for a really vulnerable segment of our society. And I know British Columbia is not alone in having this conversation, as across, uh, across country uh, there are eight other provinces who do similar actions as we do. Now, I've stated in this House before that people who receive family maintenance uh, from a spouse may also receive income assistance top up if the maintenance payments does not exceed their income assistance amount. Now, uh, Madam Speaker, as a Minister of, the, of Social Development and Social Innovation, as a member of this government, we continue to strive to support persons uh, in British Columbia who are most vulnerable. We have these conversations. We look forward to making sure that if there are opportunities to make improvements, we do so. But, Madam Speaker, uh, we take this issue very seriously, and I don't want the members opposite to ever characterize it as being any different. Member for Nelson Creston on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I'm not too sure who the minister says he's met with yesterday. The single moms were here, and I didn't get a single phone call, a single email, or a text message, Facebook tweet, or anything from this minister asking me to bring the single moms over to his office so he could talk to them. He did not have a conversation with them yesterday, Madam Speaker, and it's very disappointing to hear him say that he is talking to people when this government is not. It is very disappointing to hear the minister continually compare himself to parents who are living on $1,000 a month when he makes $150,000 each year. Earlier this week, the member for Maple Ridge Mission argued against a poverty reduction strategy in BC, saying, I quote, food. I have not met children starving in British Columbia in the past 50-some years. Clearly, the member has not visited the food banks and soup kitchens in his own community. Honourable Speaker, many children in BC are going hungry. Child clients of food banks has risen to 30 per cent, and that's exactly why the single moms were here yesterday. So my question is back to the Premier. No more empty slogans. Will the Premier today commit to taking action, stop dismissing these families, and end the child support clawback. Minister of Social Development and Social Innovation. Madam Speaker, I've been in this House for five years, and what the member opposite just accused me of is reprehensible. Just because I have a job that actually pays a certain amount of dollars doesn't mean that I do not understand the concerns and challenges facing here, here. single parent families.
Madam Speaker, I ran for this party, for this province, because I want to make life better for all British Columbians. Yeah, yeah. And yes, Madam Speaker, I have an opportunity in this day to have a job to help make lives better for vulnerable citizens of this province. But, Madam Speaker, this is not the job I've always had or always will have. I honestly believe we work hard in this province, not just in this legislature, not just in school districts, not just in nonprofit organizations. We want to make sure that those in our society who need a little bit more are there to be supported, and it's not an easy task. And to accuse me otherwise, Madam Speaker, just makes me angry. supports for vulnerable for citizens of this province. That is why 800,000 individuals do not pay MSP premiums. Madam Speaker, that was why more than a quarter of a million British Columbians do not pay for farmer care. We don't need to talk about bus pass as well, but Madam Speaker, do not accuse me of not caring for the citizens of British Columbia. to order. Esquimalt Royal Roads. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, the reality is that this issue is not about that minister. It's exactly. not about him. It's about the children and the families who are having their money clawed back every single month by this government. I was quoting him. I was quoting him. Obviously a very sore point, Honourable Speaker, this topic, and I, and I can understand why that side of the House is so sensitive to this. Now, you know, on Monday we had a, a debate in here about poverty reduction. Uh, Madam Speaker, I think I have the floor. Could we ask the Minister please to let me have please, the floor? Please take your seat, Member. Please continue. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. You know, on Monday we had a debate in this House about poverty reduction strategy, and the member from Maple Ridge Mission also argued a poverty reduction strategy isn't needed because, and I quote, there are about a half a dozen thrift stores that provide low or no cost clothing for the needy. Now, Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask the Premier and the Minister responsible if they agree with their colleague that charity is a replacement for government action on poverty? And if not, will this government do the right thing today and remove the clawback exactly. from single parent families who need this to take care of their children? Remove the clawbacks. That is all you need to do to make this go away. Minister of Social Development and Social Innovation. Madam Speaker, as Minister of Social Development and Social Innovation, I am charged with, with assisting individuals who are in a vulnerable place in society. As the members opposite know, areas which I am responsible for are areas like income assistance, persons with disabilities, and yes, some employment programs. Madam Speaker, as a government, we grow the economy to provide services for British Columbians. One of the things that's so essential is that we make sure that British Columbians can have jobs. And as we go forward in this province, we are charged with the responsibility of making sure that families, parents, will be better able to support their children. We do so by making sure there's an economic climate that individuals can have hope for to make sure they have jobs to raise their families and provide opportunities for their young children. Now, that being said, Madam Speaker, I want to remind the members opposite that we do many things for, for residents in British Columbia. 
if, uh, if a person is a single parent on income assistance, they have access to about $385 of income tax supports uh, every month, Madam Speaker. This works out to a huge, huge opportunity for individuals to get supports. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have had an opportunity in the last nine months in British Columbia to do some amazing things. And I know the member opposites may claim that we were not working when we were actually uh, not sitting in this legislature. But, Madam Speaker, I was so glad that we had the opportunity for myself and my colleagues to go around the province of British Columbia and meet with individuals and organizations. Not only did I have that seven months of Community Living BC month to travel around the province of British Columbia, but we also had the opportunity to lay that foundation for a conversation about the white paper for persons with disabilities. And the conversation was just not about persons with disabilities. But that being said, Madam Speaker, we were able to hear about concerns and challenges and opportunities that we can do to better serve the residents of this province, Madam Speaker. And I'm sure there's going to be a follow-up question to follow, Madam Speaker, and I look forward to giving the information, more information to my follow-up colleagues. Railroads. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Well, this conversation gets more disappointing each and every day in this House. You know, I heard the, uh, the Finance Minister uh, brag the other day that all those Cabinet Ministers are going to get a 10 per cent raise uh, very shortly. And at the same time, Madam Speaker, at the same time, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, it, they were forthcoming. At the same time that they're all going to get their 10 per cent pay raise, they are taking $100 a month out of the families of most poverty, impoverished families and children in this province, taking this money back, clawing it back every single month, the money that would make all the difference in the world. And they have no compunction about taking back $100 a month from children while they can brag about pay raises. It is disgraceful, Honourable Speaker, disgraceful. Now, it's simple. Make, this can all be fixed. The Premier today can stand up and say, I will stop clawing back child support from children, and this will all go away. Honourable Speaker, will the government, will the Premier do the right thing? Stop clawing back child support payments from children and, and impoverished families in this province. Mr. Social Development and Social Innovation. Madam Speaker, there's always work to be done in British Columbia in this ministry and work that we will always continue to do. That is why we continue to meet with individuals, with organizations and even businesses to see what we can do to better provide and evolve income assistance for persons uh, who are needing work but also persons with disabilities in this province because we know that society changes and there's always different challenges that may come up. And that being said, that is why as a minister I strive incredibly hard to make sure we meet with individuals not just in British or not just in Victoria, not in the lower mainland, but in communities large and small across this province because sometimes the needs are different in say a community in say northern British Columbia like Dawson Creek or Fort St. John because of climatic, economic or geographic differences. But that being said, we want to make sure there's opportunities there. And Madam Speaker, we don't just stop and talk. One of the things I want the members opposite to remind, remind themselves of you will look at the budget documents. I'm looking forward to canvassing this in, in estimates coming forward. That one of the things that we look forward in Budget 2014 to do is provide some extra supports for CLBC. Why? Because they're a vulnerable section of, uh, you, of our society and one that we ought to make sure we grow the economy and provide those extra supports for. Madam Speaker, we are just now doing the uh, final analysis of the uh, data from the consultation process from the Disability White Paper, and I look forward to having a work plan to go forward Thank to help you, British Sir. Columbians all over this great province. Yeah. 